live and um yeah we're just we're just welcoming everybody who's coming on uh, on our live as well let's just make sure can everybody hear us let's just make sure everybody can hear if everybody can hear let me know that you guys can hear us and we will get cracking yeah can i just type it in if you can hear us type it in and let's get moving yay fantastic hi lynette hope you're well Hello to everybody that's joining us on Facebook Live. Hello to everybody that's joining us on the webinar. We have got so much to share with you today. And I know, as I said, over the last couple of weeks and months, fantastic, over the last couple of weeks and months, in particular, the last six to nine months, people have, think that businesses, the world has just gone upside down and so has people's lives and livelihoods. So today we wanna to talk a bit about what it takes to truly win in business, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what you're facing, regardless of what's going on, regardless of who's saying what. <laughs> we want to talk about how to win in business today. So if you, if you are joining and you have got questions, type your questions in. We will answer your questions live. Uh, today, if, you, if there's something that you think you want to ask that's specific to your business, ask it away this is the only free listen this is the first and only free live masterclass we've done this year so ask your questions live we will answer it and we will keep looking at both screens so we can share it so andrew today we're talking about winning in business clearly right now a lot of people are not winning in business because of what has gone on However, there are people that are still winning and we want to talk to you about winning regardless of what you're doing or what you're going through. Um, yes, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Everybody's telling us what's happening. Fantastic. We're, that's really good. Really good. That's Wonderful. Really good. Congrats. Congrats. People are getting stuff done. In the midst of everything, people are getting stuff done. Well done, Anastasia. Forgetting what you, you're forgetting your business license today. Brilliant. That's what I'm talking about. So let's get into it. Type your questions in. I want to, you know, we want to hear from you. We want to answer your questions live. We want to help you truly to live your champion life. Andrew. Yes. How to win in business. <laughs> <laughs> so now then, Andrew. What is the what is I would say the 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 key, the, out of all of, we got 12 points to cover with you here today, okay? Out of all 12, what would you say is the number one reason what people need to do in order, the, the thing they need to do in order to win in business? What would you say that is? There's, there's two things I can see on our list. Mm. One, which is your reason why. I would say that's going to be your biggest reason because without mm. a reason why, you're not going to make it. You're really not. And the next one is persistence. Okay, really let's talk about that. Let's talk about persistence for a minute. Persistence. Basically, persistence, it means you go out there and you keep going and mm. you keep going and keep pushing the boundaries no matter what. Often you'll get to points where you think, I've had enough, I've mm. quit. And how do I know that? Been there, got that T-shirt <laughs> several times. <laughs> on there. But you sometimes got to push through. I mean, if it is uphill struggle completely mm. Mm. and you're starting to hate what you're doing mm. you need to change but if you enjoy what you're doing and you are seeing some traction mm. you need to keep pushing it back. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's okay you say to keep pushing and keep persistent and be persistent in what it is you're wanting to do but when when is it time to stop when is it time to to quit when is it time to not keep pushing if something isn't working I say when one, the figures are not going in the right mm -hmm. direction at all, completely. Yeah. And you realize it's not going to make sense. Yeah. Uh, it comes into a company to say if it's not making money, it's not making sense. Yeah. If it's not doing that, it's time to quit then. Mm. And if you start to hate what you're doing. Yeah. If you start hating the actual process, what you're doing, no matter how much money you're making, if you hate it, that's going to damage your health long term. And it's not mm. worth doing that. So, Find what your passion is. Find out what you really want to do. 
push forward with that and that's where you get yeah. you go into persistence because that's where you're going to have the energy to keep going through when you're doing something that you mm. really enjoy doing being persistent and, and that's for a lot of people when the mess hits the fan because it does in business mm. a lot of people quit at that moment right at the point just before they have a breakthrough they quit um and they think well this, this is not working and so i should just give up you know we always talk about the time it takes to build anything mm. it takes Five years. Some of you think don't think you got five years. Okay, so they, they, so yeah, but it takes time. It takes persistence in order for you to keep pushing and keep yeah. going. The average person quit at the sign of things not working out the way in which they want it to work out, or because they don't have enough information in order for it to work, or perhaps they don't know have the know how either to build it, and so they quit at that point. And that, that whole idea of persistence and being persistent and, and, and just pushing forward and, and pushing through to win, most people, this is the reason why 80% of businesses fail in the first five years, because most people quit. Things start going wrong, they quit. Things not working out they would, they would like, they quit. Let's talk about a perfect example. <laughs> so let's talk about in the last four or five months, uh, okay, so just before COVID, around March, we um, decided we we're going to start investing again in more property. We had properties before. We're going to invest again in more property, and we decided, yeah, let's get let's get going. Let's make it happen. Not worry about COVID or what's whatever. Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. My God, how was that experience? You talk about persistence. Wow. Uh, how many how many mortgage companies we changed? I was going to say this is it. Sometimes people think hard having challenges. Mm and not enjoying what you're doing are the same thing they're not if you enjoy it at the long term it doesn't mean you're gonna, you've got to go through mm. days where you think what the heck am i doing why am i doing this yeah i'm so frustrated with this um yeah we we had challenges with because of covid with the mm. mortgage companies mm. we went through three companies before the found <laughs> one that would stick with it because the other two decided they didn't want to go forward anymore because of the uncertainty in the mm. property market with covid and that was literally what it, what it was. So it was, to. we got the mortgage, the mortgages. Mortgages. Then they said, no, And then they said, no, it. we don't have the mortgages. <laughs> and then they came back and said, okay, we will give you the mortgage for this one, but not for those three. And then they said, we're not giving you the mortgage for any at all. And you can imagine every week, every other week, every month, you were hearing something new. So you sit there, waited, mm -hmm. and you thought, yep, this is going through. And then a month later, oh, no, this is not going through. And then two weeks later, oh, no, this is not going through. And then the last company said, oh, then you have to do this. And then the amount of money you were going to get if we mortgage that one to buy another one, oh, you know, you're not going to get that much money. No, you're going to get less. And then, oh my God, and then they said, okay, well, um, we, we need this and we need that and we need, and all of these extra things that they needed. Okay, yes, you could do 20%. Oh no, you're going to do 25%. And the, 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 the goalposts kept changing all the time. It kept changing constantly. And we're all fired up and excited. We're going to buy these other new rentals. We're so happy, blah, blah, blah. And some of you see me posting it on social media. We're buying these new rentals. Yes, we're so excited. I kept the excitement. Now, let me tell you guys. I tell you guys. You know me, right? You guys, you know me. I got to the point where I said to Andrew, I ain't want a property anymore. Like, I've had enough of this. <laughs> like, this is like four months. Seriously, it takes two months to about, buy a property. That's about the fifth time I haven't just approved when our funding was coming oh. up <laughs> as well. It was so pernickety. They want to see this and they want to see that. And I, and I got to the point where I said, you know what? I said, God, if you want me to get on properties, you need to do something because I had enough. I've had enough. But I didn't quit. I still held on and to the fact that we are going to get this come what me. We're going to do it. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep pushing. And where do you find, some people say, Carmelita, where do you find the drive, the passion, the determination to keep going? In fact, it's, it's quite funny. Talking about passion and determination to keep going, there was one property we put an offer in on and it sounded very vague with what the mm. agents was coming back with. And we just basically crossed it off the list. <laughs> and we went and found another two properties instead. Yes. And then uh, this was on the Friday. And on the Monday, it says, oh, they've gone with your offer. We said, what offer? What offer? <laughs> Which property? <laughs> but we so had, we, that one as well. we should have had enough. <laughs> but even when you're at the point, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Even when you're at the point where you feel that you've had enough, mm. you've got to keep 
going. You've got to be persistent, focused on the end goal. You can't think, well, you know, it hasn't gone your way. Most things will not go your way. Most things will never go your way because there are all these moving parts. We're doing anything. And Linda, you're absolutely right. Someone said it is always too soon to quit. Exactly. Yes. So you have all these moving parts and all these different things and who is responsible for what and who's responsible for doing what. You've got to manage. The, 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 there are two things which we say in life. You, the only two things you can control in life, it is your attitude and your activity. You cannot control someone else's attitude. You certainly cannot control someone else's activity, especially your staff. Mm -hmm. You can control your attitude and your activity. And as long as you can control those moving forward, you will win. So, uh, so Andrew is absolutely right. Persistence, the number one reason why people fail in business because they quit before they should. And you're right, Linda, it's, not, it's, it's always too soon. Mm to quit. Absolutely. Okay. Next point. Again, guys, if you want more of this, we are, we are doing a private masterclass, private webinar this weekend, 24th of October. Click the link on the screen and register. We're going to teach you how to turn your yearly income into your monthly income, which is exactly what we did. Okay. And subscribe to YouTube so you can get more of these videos as we put them out every day and every week. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about in winning in business is, and I think this is something that you and I talked about uh, before, mm -hmm. being able to do the work. Yes. Let's talk about the work. Yes. What, what, what does winning in business require? It requires work. Let's talk about the work. Yeah. And if you're doing, if you, I mean, some businesses don't take a lot of time. Mm. And it depends what you're doing. But if you've got a big design, a big dream, usually it means it's going to be a lot of hours that you're going to have to do. Mm. And there's no way around it. You're going to have to do the work. Mm. And if you're work shy, and to be honest with you, I have a saying, I'm working my way out of work. Mm. And I'm working hard today. I do the hours today. So, and it's the old say, as you're saying, I think the best way of putting it is, I do today that others will not, so I can do tomorrow that others cannot. Mm. And that is a big reason. And that is a big reason why. And you know, it's it's, but it's a problem for a lot of people, yeah. guys. If you want to win in business, you got to do the work. You got no mm. choice. Mm. Now, again, if you are in my inner circle, you would know we talk about income generating work. It is not just work. You can work. There are people on social media, or oh, they're working. You see them, they're working, but they're busy being broke. There's a difference. You could be busy working, but busy being broke. Your job is to do the work that is going to generate the most money, the least amount of time and the least effort and with the, the most profit coming through in the end. That's the, that's the goal. It has to be income generating work. So for instance, when we're investing in property, for me, I'm really quick at finding properties like, like a shot. I can find deals like a shot. Andrew then work the figures out. So to make sure that it does actually work. But in between finding the deals, going through the transactions and making sure that we have it to the, in the end, I am very tight with my time. So Andrew might say to me sometimes, okay, we're going we're to talk about some domestic issues now. Mm -hmm. Andrew's going to say to me sometimes, oh, let's go up and see the property because the painting. I'm like, why, why do I need to go and see it? Why, why do I need to see builders painting? Tell me why. Because you weren't happy with the building goal last time. Well, that's a different story because we didn't go down there before. Okay. But generally, why am I going to watch them? When they finish the job, I told them what to do when they finish the job. I want to see before I pay you. Me going every minute is wasting my time. That is not an income generating activity. If I'm with a client and I'm constantly having to do certain things with that client, that's not generating me additional revenue. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's, that's not good use of my time. So the work has to be a living is made from nine to five. A fortune is made after five. Some people, they, 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 they do their the sort of normal hours and then after they think, well, I might as well go and do this and I might as well go do that. You would be surprised. Guys, listen to this. You would be surprised. You want to turn your yearly income into your monthly income, which I'm going to teach this coming Saturday. A living is made from nine to five. A fortune is made after five. You would be surprised how many people, when they finish and they come home, they go to the pub, they go to the bar, they go to here, they go to chill out with friends, they go somewhere. That time, that sweet spot in the evening between 
I had to look. Seven to seven after the children go to bed and all that business, if you got kids, seven, eight o'clock until about nine, nine o'clock, half nine, ten o'clock. That sweet spot for an hour and a half or two hours. Do you know how much you could get in within that time? When, I do so I, much within that time. When I was in the sales game, it was interesting. Some of my biggest sales came out mm. of catching people at seven o'clock in the morning and after eight o'clock at night. Mm. And that's because I was calling them and guess what? The secretaries have gone home. Everybody else has gone home. The person I needed, the CEO, he was there. He picks the phone up. I can talk to him directly and get a mm. And this is it. Most people just work nine to five mm. or those sort of hours thinking that they're going to be financially free. And yes, you can get free by doing that. But what, you, what I've found, what I've seen with all my friends and people I know who are very successful, they mm. have had to do the hours. And, and this is the thing. It is about, so it's one thing about doing the hours, but it's making sure the work has to be an income generating activity. Yes. Because you, you, you I, I remember doing a, a seminar some time ago in the past, um, a mastermind that we did, and we gave everybody that was in the room the timeline of their lives when they want to retire. So we gave them a, a, a measuring tape and we, we looked at how young they were, what was the age. So if they were over 40 and they wanted to retire at 60, they literally had about three years of physical income generating activity because a third of your life is sleep, a third of your life is eating, eating, chilling, mm. everything else <laughs> other than an income, yeah. family time, church time, temple, mosque, whatever you believe in, it's time. Charity, charitable work, chilling, going for a walk, I mean, all of that. That's, that's time for you, time to, for your sanity then a third of your life is actual work. So if you're 40 and you went to retire at 60, you got a third of your life. And, and that's you making sure that that third of your life is completely focused on income generating activities or things that are gonna take you closer to your end goal. So if even in that eight hours, if the eight hours you're working on minding someone else's business, or that eight hours, you kind of, well, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm sort of doing work, but I'm sort of faffing around. I'm not sure what I'm doing. If you are not targeted within that time, you might have about three years. If you're 40, you want to retire at 60. I mean, solid work. If you are 50, again, well, you do the math. If you're over 60, well, yeah, you do the math. So the, the goal is if you are focusing on work, you have to work. You, you're not going to, people think, oh, well, they see us and they think, well, you know, it's nice for, for, for us. There are sometimes, like last night, like, okay, you, you guys got to hear the, the drama. So it's like last night, I, oh, yesterday afternoon, I'm, I'm in front of my computer and I'm working, I'm on it, I'm doing this, I'm like 15 things going on one time and staff and clients and everything. Yeah, I am going to say it. And, and this one said to me, oh, I'm tired. He's, he's hitting my foot under the desk. I just want you guys to know. And he's doing it again. So I, he says, like, stop it. Uh, so he's like, I'm tired. I'm going to take a break. I'm like, go lie down. Whenever you're tired, go lie down. Take a break. You know, life is more important than money. Go lie down. And then to my great surprise, he's on the bed watching the end of a movie. <laughs> How did you want to get with this? He's on the bed watching the end of a movie. And so I'm going and I'm like, what do you think you're doing? I'm sitting in the office working. The boy says, I'm just chilling out. I'm just, I'm watching the end of a movie. I'm like, Linda, you know what I'm going to do at this point? Silence. I listened to you. I did not miss, I didn't go silent. I didn't go silent. I promise. I listened to you. I did listen to you. See, I do listen to you. I listened to you. So I said to him, Linda, this is true. I said to him, get off that bed and get back in the office. So you're tired. If you're tired, then you should be lying down. You shouldn't be watching the end of a movie. And okay, all right, I, I digress. It may be his way of relaxing. But as far as I'm concerned, if you're relaxing, close your eyes. <laughs> I was like, I mean, come on, I'm sitting in the office. I'm still working. Are you, you, you. Don't take time out. We had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> And after that, we had several moments. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that bit in a minute. We'll talk about that bit in a minute. I did tell him I was going to bring it up. <laughs> but work. You have got to focus. Now, 
for those of you that are in my inner circle, you know this. My life is very structured. When it's work time, I work. When it's rest time, I rest. I get up every morning, I go on my treadmill for half an hour. That's my time to just be away from everything and focus, okay? And I could be on the treadmill, I could just walk and just enjoy. I can read my Bible there, I can talk to God there, I don't want to see anybody there, that's just my time for me. I have that, I have to do that time. And then after we get into work, um, and again, it's focused work. I, I coach on certain days, I do podcast interviews on certain days, certain days I don't talk to anybody, and then there are certain days in which I write and create products and do all of that. So it's very structured. So when I'm working, I'm not thinking I should be resting. Or when I'm resting, I'm not thinking I should be working. And this is a danger for a lot of entrepreneurs. Guys, let me tell you something. If you're a startup company, you start your side hustle and it's not going well, and you're thinking I'm not putting in enough hours, initially in every new business, you've got to put in the hours. That's just without question. You, you've got to put in the hours. However, no amount of money, and it is coming to the third point, no amount of money is worth your sanity and your health. So you have to have structure in all that you do so that you can look after you, which is number one. This is coming to number three. This is something in which we, we, we hold fast. If you want to truly win in business, it is God first, family second, business third. For us, that is non-negotiable because I am not working for money. Okay, I, yeah, I like, to, I like to earn money and buy things or whatever. You know, I, I love to do that. I love to buy things, nice things. But I'm not working for money. I am working for what money can do. So I'm working for the fact that when I want, we can go first class, we can go to the Ritz, or we can buy a new car, or we can buy some more rentals, or we can go to dinner, go to lunch. That is what I'm working for. We are not working for money, but for what money can do. So it has to be in, if you want to win in business, okay? If you want to win, you have to have things in perspective. For us, it's God first, family second, business third. And there's a reason for that. It's because we did it wrong before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did it wrong before. Yep. We did a number of years where basically we did not take time out at all. Mm -hmm. We spent three months in Amsterdam and we haven't been on a boat in Amsterdam yet. Mm -hmm. that's, I do not recommend that. You do need to play mm -hmm. as well. You work hard, you play hard. And that's something that we have learned over the years it's important to do that and you know yeah. success isn't a destination success is a journey absolutely and so now whenever we travel we make sure we take time out wherever we are mm. to enjoy where we get to see and we've seen some amazing places right around the world and yeah know, and that's what we do now so anytime you do it working hard on your business do smell the roses absolutely as well that's absolutely important. so it's important so that's our mantra that's non-negotiable at all. Mm -hmm. This is the, the next thing I want to talk about. So again, guys, if you've got questions, type your questions in. If you've got a question about your business, not about working as a couple in business, but just anything to do with business, type your questions in and we will answer your questions live, okay? Um, I want to talk about this, this particular topic, Andrew, because so many people, especially startup companies and established businesses, they start off in business and somehow they don't count the cost. Mm -hmm. They don't know if they're profitable or not. They don't understand the figures or the numbers or hire someone who does. Now, I want to talk about that first because I was guilty of that. And then Andrew will talk about... I never noticed. See the domestic? Do you see what's mm -hmm. going on here? Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Can I see? You can. <laughs> I was so bad with the numbers. Like, I was so bad. I, I refused to understand the numbers in business, i.e. how much things actually cost, is um, are we in profit or not, or is it just money coming through the door? Did I understand the numbers when we were buying property or I was leaving it up to Andrew, or was I willing to hire someone else? Now, in the past, Andrew would really be focused on the properties and, and the numbers and the figures and, and, and all of that. And I would be like, oh, don't, don't worry about that. How much money we made? And he'll be like, well, we didn't actually make profit. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not bothered about profit. Tell me how much money we made. And he's like, well, you didn't actually make any money. I'm like, well, look, look, look all the money there. It's like, no. Yep. 
simple, simple equation. <laughs> Camelita would say, have an item for sale. You still, you still. You, you, spend, you spend 10 pounds to buy it. She sold it for five pounds. She thinks she's made five pounds profit, not lost five pounds. It was just interesting. But it was so she bad. Was, she's far from that now. She understands. It was, so, it was so bad, honestly. And for women in particular, a lot of women, not all women, a lot of women don't like to call, count the cost, the numbers in business. It's sort of, if they have a partner or a business partner or a husband, they leave it up to them to count the cost and the numbers. I have learned to take the time to understand the accounts, the numbers, the figures. Whereas before it'd be like, oh, Andrew, can you, can you just, um, the accountant said, Andrew, can you just sort of deal with that? You know, I just, I can't be bothered to sort of look into that. I've got other things to do. What and I, honey, I have, I, I did look at it the other day when Ian sent really? it through. You yeah. gave it to me to look through. Really? He did give it to me to look through, I promise. <laughs> and, I, and, and you said to me, look, it, look through it. And I looked yes. through the numbers and I thought, mm, what is this? What is that? Whereas before in business, if you truly want to win, understand the numbers, understand everything that you're doing and you're selling. Because I, I, I was looking, looking at the, the accounts before, this is in the past, not now. And I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I was like, okay, fine, yeah. Now, I check every little detail. What is this? What was that for? What did we spend that for? Could we cut back on that? Could we cut back you know, on this in some way? Because you have to constantly count the cost in business. You have to count the cost. It may look rosy, hi Dave. It may look rosy. It may look like you're profitable, but you are not. Mm -hmm. And then when the mess hits the fan, you're thinking to yourself, well, how much money have I spent? You've got to, you've got to, you've, you've got to learn yourself, the numbers and the figures. Train yourself to learn the numbers and the figures. Don't just wait for a husband like Andrew, if you have one of you, or business partner, who is pernickety with numbers, if you don't understand the numbers. That's not a business. Numbers are very important. It goes, and that's not just in the figures, it goes through mm. getting clients. It all works on numbers. We, you know, you'll know your figures. You can talk to so many, X number of people, and by talking to X number of people, you will get so many clients out of those people. Mm. Out of those people, those clients will do X, Y, Z. Now, you don't know who it is, but mm. you know, you put them through 100 people, X will happen. From those, that number, X will happen, and therefore you can plan and take your business forward. Mm. And the thing is, on the income side and profitable side and that area there's a lot of people we have helped over the years where we realize what their raw cost materials are for things and the outcome mm, mm, yeah. the figures didn't add up but we found a way how they could buy the product at a cheaper price same product at a cheaper price some of, sometimes people end up buying, buying retail mm. and we found the ways how they can start getting it at a trade price so therefore they can be in proper competition with people rather than in competition, selling at a higher, higher price in the competition, but still losing money. Mm, and mm. you know, there are ways of ways of doing because that, I mean, that we teach. Guys, I'm telling you, if you truly want to learn a lot of this from your own business perspective, we are hosting a private webinar this coming Saturday, how to turn your yearly income into your monthly income, which is what we've done by following a lot of these principles and a whole lot more that we're going to teach. The links are on the screen. Click the link and register for that private webinar. We're going to be talking specifically about your business, the areas in which you can cut back, the areas in which you can increase your income and how to do that and, and sort of how to do that so it actually works. There's no point in you increasing your income, you're increasing your pricing and not being able to follow through with a system in order to close those sales. Mm -hmm. So we will talk a lot about that as well on Saturday. The links are on the screen, click on the link and register and we will see you there. Don't miss this one. I wanna to touch on something before we move on, Andrew, with this one just right here. For a lot of people, they're making money, okay? Um, and while they're making, they're spending. And they sort of continue to make money and then they continue to spend money. In every business, everybody can tell you, there will come a time in which it's not going to be like it is today or tomorrow or last week or the next month. What, what, what you do today in terms of the profit, profitability of your business and what you do with that money, hence the reason we invest in property, long-term, you will really truly see how profitable 
you have been in business. And you need to keep an eye on your product that you're serving mm. and selling mm. or moving forward, what the market rate is. Mm. And for instance, the properties we're buying in March were fetching a certain amount of rent. And by the time we actually got the properties through, because of COVID, it was actually August, which is a crazy length of time to, to go through. But and our solicitor says we did it quick. Yeah. Because we got the right people on board. But when by, by the time August hit, mm. the actual rents had gone up by a hundred pounds at least mm. per property in that short period of time. So you just also need to keep an eye on what's happening with the price bands and mm. making sure you are still in the market at the right price with what you're dealing with. So then that's coming to the next point. Okay, guys, this is coming to the next point. Invest if you want to win in business. Not you're winning today and then tomorrow you're in a mess or next mm. month you don't know where the money's gone. If you truly want to win in business, you've got to invest in value. That value may be in investments or that value will or can also be in your mind. You've got to constantly invest in value, preferably income generating opportunities as much as possible, but you've got to constantly invest in value. Now again, what portion of your business should you invest in value if you want to win in business? With my inner circle, um, I teach them a sort of breakdown of the 100%, 30%, 25%, 4%, I'm looking at mine on, on my wall, what percentage goes where every month? Because you've got to constantly invest in value, whether it's value where you're putting monies aside for savings, investments, pensions, whatever, or you invest in yourself. This is a constant thing you need to do every single day, no matter what age you're at, because you don't know how long you're going to be alive and kicking for. So you have got to invest in value, constantly invest in value. Okay. Type your questions in, in the chat so we can see it. And if anybody else has that question as well. Uh, oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Marcia, yeah. what, what is your question? Tell us, we know we've done a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> so Property is just one of them. Just one of them. Uh, type your questions in. What, what, what is the question you've got about a courier business? Type the question in, in the chat so we can, um, everybody else can see it and that we uh, can answer it. And you know, if other people have that same question, we can answer it for them. So type it in in the chat, not just in the Q&A, um, if you have a question about your career uh, business. Invest in value. When you make money, the money has to go somewhere. When you're a startup, a lot of the money goes back into your business, because that's what you do. You sort of pumping monies back into the business constantly. There has to come a time whereby you are investing part of that money in value and an income generating asset of some sort. Whether it's another business that could generate you residual income, whatever it is, you've got to constantly invest in value if you want to win in business. Because look at now, okay? Let, let's look at now, for instance. If you had a couple hundred grand right now, a couple of million, depending on where you're at, a couple tens of thousands, in somewhere where you had access to during this whole period, okay, would you not feel a lot better in your mind that you had access to cash? The biggest problem for entrepreneurs is cash flow. We all know that, yeah? The biggest problem for investors also is, is access to cash. That's the biggest problem. So for entrepreneurs, it's cash flow, and for investors, is actually getting access to cash investments. That's the biggest problem. That's why you've got to constantly invest even while you're making money in value. Marcia. Yes, we can do that. Obtaining mock, absolutely Marcia. That is training for Saturday. If you want to learn how to obtain more contracts, um, we can teach you how to do that. That's what we do. We teach people how to build, sustain, and develop a global brand through our Event of Champions brand and through the Camelita brand. Uh, the link is on the screen. Let me give you the link again. Just to give you an idea, Marcia, yes, we've been talking about properties there. Um, that's how we do that. So, so, uh, we did bring a company into Australia that was dealing with coffee. Mm. And we put together 7,000 people throughout Australia, including Tasmania, mm. to be representatives of that company. When it launched, it was the biggest launch of any company in the history of Australia to date, to my knowledge. 
we did 1.6 million in that first month of business. So if you so if you so want, we know how to get contracts. We know and how new to clients. Build and new clients. Mm. Um, and that's just in that area. We've been building up and built and working with um, contracts through a number of businesses. Mm. So click the link on the screen, Master. If you want to know how to get new business, new contracts, to carry on winning new business constantly, click the link on the screen. Join us this coming Saturday for how to turn your yearly income into your monthly income because we did it and we teach others to do exactly the same. How to scale, how to sell at level five, how to create multiple incomes from what you already know. We're going to talk about all of that this coming Saturday, 24th of October. What month are we in? Yeah, October. <laughs> 24th. This coming Saturday. Click the link on the screen and register right now um, for that particular private webinar. We only have space for a limited number of people. We keep it really intimate so we can answer your questions and you're going to tell us a lot about your business before and all that sort of thing. So click the link, get, get cracking and let's, let's, let's get it done. Right. So we talked about investing in value. Let's talk now, Andrew, about doing your due diligence mm -hmm. because there are so many people who join, oh, they will join everything possible. Like, like, especially during this whole period, Everybody, oh, I'm joining this new company. Oh, I'm joining that new business. Oh, I'm, I'm joining this. I'm starting this. Oh, I'm investing with this person and I'm doing this and I'm doing, and they, 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 they haven't done their due diligence. Let's talk about that, Andrew. It's a bit like the uh, shiny penny syndrome. Mm. It's a, oh, there's a shiny penny. I'll go over there. Oh, there's this one over here. And there's a lot of opportunities out there. But mm. the thing is, what's your specialty? What do you really excel in mm. what's your desire what do you really enjoy doing and that that's yeah. one of the key things and then after that is a case you've got to focus on that yeah and work with that a classic one is uh, we had a client a number of years ago now and it was very interesting because i was i remember having this conversation with her mm. for about 20 minutes saying okay and it, she'd got the one of the hottest topics at that point in time that she was dealing with and we went through this point of saying when have you physically done what you're teaching? Mm. And after about 20 minutes, I had to say, so you're a theorist, which they got very upset about. But they went away, thought about what I said, mm. put together a program that they knew inside out, which I must be honest, was the most boring thing I've ever seen, really was. But six weeks later, she ended up with a company earning £6,000 a day. Mm. And been with them now five, six years. So when you find what your true passion is, or what you really know what you do, is having that due diligence to go through and work with And it. so even invest, even in, in, in every business, because we run mm. multiple businesses, property is one. We also run the event of champions um, and the Camelita brand, where we coach and train entrepreneurs across the globe to build, sustain, and develop a global brand, either mm. through both brands. Um, and then we've got a side hustle that we do as well that generates additional revenue. In everything that you want to do or doing right now, guys, okay, do your due diligence. Understand what you are doing. If someone says to you, oh, um, we could do this together, or we should do this, or we should get involved in this, or we should, I'm like, okay, so yeah, I remember one time. Check, one, check, all, check all the figures. Uh, seriously, there's and one. Check it again. I mean, it sounds too good to be true. Normally it is. <laughs> 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 we are talking from personal experience. Yes, all we do. You don't want to have a domestic here, yes. guys, do you? Mm -hmm. That was a few tens of thousands, but there we go. 20, it wasn't 30, but it was 23 grand. So what he's saying is because I didn't do my due diligence, we lost tens of thousands of pounds. Yeah. And it's right, and it is because I did not do my due diligence. Mm -hmm. and, and so when I'm telling you this, we're telling you, if, look, if you're in business and you haven't lost money, get ready, it's coming. You know what yeah, I mean? It's coming. It. You're going to lose something. We learned, we learned a lot from that lesson because oh. when, when things go wrong in business, it's not a time to say, oh, this is bad. It can't be yeah. for me. Yeah. It's a time to say, okay, what can I learn from this? And move on. And move on to make sure it doesn't happen again. Because the thing is, we did that. We lost a few tens of thousands. And mm. our mentor at the time, they lost... Same, same sort of figure, but it was in millions. <laughs> I didn't feel quite so bad then. <laughs> <laughs> I remember saying that. And they were like, oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> we were crying. 
<laughs> we were crying for, for 20, 30 grand and they were saying, we'll put some zeros on that in the right direction. Yeah. Um, because in business, okay, you will lose. This is just part of the plan. And I'm, as Andrew was saying, doing your due diligence and coming out the other side is understanding one, first do your due diligence so it wouldn't happen. But even if it does, and it will, you're in mm -hmm. business, it will, okay? When you come out on the other side, this is where you tend to get very cautious and you tend to be, you know, you, you tend to check things a lot quicker. So I'm encouraging you now, if someone comes to you with an idea or a plan and they said, you can do this, we can do this, it's always we, it's amazing how we can do this, but you're the one doing the work. Um, just do your due diligence, take the time. And, and on Saturday on that uh, masterclass, that private webinar, I am going to be teaching you about what you need to do in order to do your due diligence. What are some of the things you need to have in place, i.e. the contracts um, and all the legalities and just everything if you want to truly win in business. In winning in business, let's talk about this one because this is something that I think um, taking calculated risks. Let's talk about that now because that's, uh, that's part of the plan. You will lose this without a doubt. We've lost tens of thousands, a lot, and more than that. You will lose and you will win. You still have to carry on taking calculated yes. risks. And the way you take calculated risks is doing your due diligence and asking the right questions to the right people. Making sure you've got a, the team in place. You have to have a team, a lawyer, an accountant, a financial advisor. You need and a lawyer for the lawyer. Um, an accountant for the accountant. <laughs> you need a financial advisor. You need a mortgage person if, you, if, you, if you're dealing in, in that sort of thing. You need, if you were in property, you need builders and, 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 and con clients, contacts, and I mean, the list is endless. Mm -hmm. And over time, you will build up that list of people. Over time. It didn't take us like one day or one week or one month. Sometimes it actually took us going through some mess yeah. to get to the right people. Mm -hmm. But you've got to still take calculated risks once you've done your due diligence. Yeah, and this is important. And that's even to you, and Camelies is talking about the third party people, but even in yourself, mm. understand what you're looking at. Mm. If you don't understand it, don't do it. We will guarantee someone will take you full wool over your eyes, as I say. But mm. understand what you're looking at. Understand the figures. Do the figures add up. Have you got a market? Is there a market for this <laughs> idea or product? Is I'm someone going to buy it? You know, it, it sounds great to you. But it's interesting, one of the things I always remember is Walt Disney, he had apparently had 10 close friends. Mm. Any new idea he had as a cartoon character, he'll put a little video to film together, run it past his friends, and if one of them liked it, he wouldn't do it. If everybody says, oh, that's a load of rubbish, I'm not gonna, oh, I hate that, that's the one he ran with. So the thing is, is doing your due diligence, find out what your market is, yeah. find out is there a need for your market, Find out if it's profitable. Can you make money from it yourself? Yeah. What's your competition? Who is your competition? Because mm. sometimes you can go out there with a great idea and it could be a case that you could be going out there against a major, major client mm. and they could just basically kick you out the water before you even start. And yeah. that's something you need to be careful of. So you've got to take calculated risks, okay? Quit being risk adverse you could be cautious in business. Andrew is very cautious. Okay, we're coming, we're coming into the other topic here. <laughs> know your strengths and your weaknesses. We're coming into that topic. In taking calculated risks, you could be risk adverse. And everything, oh, it, all the lights have to be green before you move. And all the money needs to be on the bank. And all, you need to understand the whole process and the whole, the whole list of what needs to be done before you even move. Nobody does anything like that. The average person in building anything, they just start. I'm writing a book on starting. And, and, and you just got to start. And I, there are things you need to have in place, don't get me wrong, when you start. But you just have to start. A lot of times, the list of what you need to do comes as you go along, in addition to the things that you will have um, initially. But you have got to just get going with it. And there are times you might get very small amounts of money. There are times you'll think, oh God, this is not working. But you have got to just start. If you're risk adverse, you pay. How to deal with people that are risk adverse? My dear husband here is risk adverse. <laughs> My dear wife is crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Andrew needs to check everything out in fine detail before we do it. And he will check and he will check and he will check. And I'm standing there and I'm, it's, it's, I'm, it's driving me crazy. I'm like, seriously? No, no, hold on. We'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses in a minute. Wait, let me answer this question. Wait, hold on. Natasha says, do you have a checklist when commissioning a team? Yes. yes. I have a checklist for, like, mm -hmm. like, like <laughs> yes. for those of you in my inner circle, you know I've got a list for the list. Okay, I have a list. For everything, I have a list. If I'm going to my accountant, or I'm going to my financial advisor, I'm going to have a list. I have always have a list. They, they, they come prepared. Okay, what's your list? <laughs> if I have a list. If you are looking for people that are the ones you need to have on your team to do anything, you need to, number one, either get a referral from someone. The best way to find those people is get a referral. You might uh, connect with them through a networking event of some sort, but you need to, to do at least do your diligence on them uh, as well, because they're the ones who's going to be guiding you through in certain things you want to do in investing and in winning in business. So, and I'll, Natasha, you're on the uh, webinar on Saturday. I will talk a lot more about that, and I'll show you the list as well that you need. Yeah, okay, you, so I'll show you, I'll show you on Saturday. It's like my accountant. A lot of people think, oh, an accountant, they're professional. We just go and hire. No, there's accountants and accountants. My accountant, before I brought him mm. on board, I had three referrals from him from companies, and I spoke to each company mm. that he was dealing with. One was a startup like me at the time. Another one was quite a major entity, and another one was a, a big mm, company. Mm, mm. And they all sang his praises, so I took him on board. And uh, they were right, because so he's been with me now 35 years. Yeah. So, and our yeah. financial advisor right now, he's also into property as well, so it's good for us. Yeah. And he's sort of very, uh, he might be listening at some point, he is very matter-of-fact. You know, some people, they're matter-of-fact. He will just yeah. say it as it is. <laughs> I, I love that, because I want him to tell me as it is. I want him to tell me if I'm messing around or if I need to just get off my backside and get it done. I need him to tell me. Yeah. And so he's like that, and I really appreciate him being, you know, like that uh, to us. But again, he came, recommended, and we met him, and all of that business and with that you must say would actually yes i agree with that you need to find people that got the balls to tell you if you're going wrong or they think you're going wrong it doesn't mean you have to take their advice but it's useful hearing other yeah. people's advice who are close with your business and know what you're well, doing well my <laughs> i tell you my accountant is probably the only person that talks to me like that <laughs> <laughs> everybody's like Kavali, my accountant he is he would say, shut up, Kabbalista, just, just shut up and get to work. We need to get to the end goal. Because I would, I would give him, this is another thing in winning in business. Your team needs to understand your end goal. Yes. So my team, i.e. my financial advisor, my accountant, my mortgage man, my attorney, my this, my that, they all know the end goal. So at the beginning of every financial year or sort of during the year, I would give my accountant my goals. This is what I want to accomplish in that year. This is what I plan to do. He's, I mean, he's, he's, he knows everything. He can see everything. He gets very excited. He puts the order in for a new car. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually said at the race. Yes. Before we said at the race. Yes. I was going to say, yeah, like, this, that's so not this on. Is the thing, when you're getting your key people, not the mundane people in that sense, yeah. but your key people, your key team, pay them well. Yeah. That's important. Pay them well. So, so I would give him this, this list of all what we want to achieve at the beginning of the year. And during the year, he would be he would be keeping me accountable mm -hmm. so he would keep me accountable like every quarter or whenever he does the books he'll keep me accountable and he will say okay so what's going on with the with the target with the goals because he has a copy of it especially obviously he's not coming to our house now because of of covid mm -hmm. but when he did he would bring it with him every time <laughs> oh, God. but he would remind me you said you want to win in business you said you're going to do this why, where are you with things right now? So make sure that they have your back. You, you're accountable to them yeah. as well, not just yourself or your business partner. And Natasha says, what methodology do you apply when testing the market? It all depends on what your business is, Natasha. It's not a one size fits all. I will give you a list on Saturday. Remind me as well who you're going to be. So guys, look, if you've got questions, post your questions in. If, if I can't answer all of it or we can't answer all of it, we have a private webinar we're hosting this coming Saturday, 24th of October. We're going to teach you how to turn your yearly income into your monthly income. Click the links on the screen and register now. We will 
help you with your own business, how we took our yearly income into our monthly income. And so Natasha, with that method methodology um, in testing the market, it all depends on your business, what your business is, because every business is very, 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 very different. The sales systems are usually quite similar, but uh, businesses are different. Natasha also says, yeah. do you pay your team based on a fixed fee or a percentage of the projected income? No, it, my, my the lawyer fee. has a fixed fee. It's fixed fee. Most of it's fixed fee. I mean, well, the lawyer isn't fixed fee. It is partly fixed, partly percentage. Um, he works. On is he? Fee. Yes. Yes. Did you know that? <laughs> It's a good job I'm answering this one, isn't it? No, hold on. This is a conspiracy. Is, is this conspiracy yeah. carrying on? This is, a, this is I said how it, I get it. There's a conspiracy yeah. between him and my accountant. <laughs> I, I, I say it's a black thing because my accountant is also white. I say, I asked, my, I asked him, is this a black thing? And are you not telling me certain things? Yeah. He just laughs. So he, works, <laughs> he works partly on a percentage, yes. It all depends on the size of the company, what turnover is, et cetera, of course, it's fears on there. It depends whose role is what on there. Again, that will be looking more into your business because some people will be on a percentage, some people will be on fixed fee. Um, mm. Particularly in sales, because that's my background, I prefer to put people on percentage on that because they're on sales. If they're not making the sale, they shouldn't be in business. Be Nobody's just asking about your team. Yes, you know, that, like, like I you know, say, you've got sales I mean, team. I, for you're me, basically. because yeah. my because our accountant is so amazing, like he is. He's, yeah, he's like a big brother to us in a sense, not just a, a business professional. Actually, what, what am I on? Because I'm not on a fixed fee, I'm not on percentage. What am I on? I need to talk to you, yeah, the conspiracy carries on. <laughs> I said to him, I said to the accountant, hold on. Because so he, he, Andrew does the accounts in house with, with, with the accountant. So, um, and so the accountant, see, he does everything. He has the back end, so he sees everything and whatever. And so sometimes he would tell Andrew certain things because I'm, working, I'm doing other things. And then all of a sudden I will hear big laughter and I'm like, who's that you're talking to? He's like, Ian. I'm like, okay, the conspiracy carries on. <laughs> so, we have a good laugh. So, but no. Yeah, I'm trying to find the kind. That's all right. Like, <laughs> Natasha <laughs> says payment in kind. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> <That's a> kindness. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. You run a professional business. No. <laughs> Look, if they would, they wait in bold. They will show you how to save money, where you should be putting your money. It's like, for instance, for instance, okay, this is this is something else as well to win in business, right? Again, for those of you in my inner circle, I'm going to be talking about this in the next on the next call. A percentage of your income, if instead of you paying taxes, pay yourself, and there are numerous ways in which you could pay yourself every month instead of at the end of the financial year paying taxes, because the government will be glad to take your money. Now look. I'm all about rendering to Caesar, which is Caesar, and to God, which is God. I'm all about surrendering all of those things. However, if you can get away with paying a lot of taxes legally, then do it. Especially if you're allowed to pay yourself first because of it, then do it. And the accountant will show you how to do that. Guys, look, because why? If you want to win in business, remember a percentage of your income has to go into investing in value. We talked about that just now. So you've got no choice. You have no yes. choice to do that. Making sure you haven't got accounts that cooks the books, as they say, you know, mm. words picking, because the, if you do get someone like that, it'll come up not onto the accountant, <laughs> so it'll come back to you. Yeah. You need to find an accountant that is good, knows what he's doing, yeah. knows the figures, knows what you can and what you can't do legally. And in fact, it's interesting, because I've always found over the last 35 plus years, mm. the VAT man, tax man, isn't something to be scared of, there's some of the, you know, they're very good. If you're having a problem or issue, you can talk to them. Yeah. I know yeah. in the past. So, so let's talk yeah. about the strengths and weaknesses because we're coming on to that now. Okay. Before we close off this call today, mm -hmm. guys, you've got questions, type your questions in wherever you are. We're going to answer your questions live. What we can do, we will answer it on Saturday at that private webinar. The link is on the screen. Click the link and register. Also, the link is on the screen. Subscribe to YouTube. We'll be doing a lot more live um, on YouTube with, with all, you know, all of these topics and a whole lot more diving into what you can do to truly win uh, in business. So click the link on the screen and subscribe to YouTube as well as book for this private webinar this coming Saturday. Let's talk about strengths and weaknesses now. In business, whether you have a business partner or not, whether you're doing business with your spouse, if you truly want to win, this is one thing I learned from Henry Ford, okay? Hire your weaknesses. This is non-negotiable. 
or allow someone else to do the things that you are weak at or in. Don't try to be a jack of all trades in business. One, you'll be trading time for money, which is not financially viable long term. And two, you will most definitely not grow or lose money. Now then, let's talk about our strengths and weaknesses. Talk about Andrew's strengths and his weaknesses. <laughs> what are your weaknesses, Andrew? I'm not a very good lion tamer. He's not a very good lion tamer, he says. He's probably right about that one. Yeah. What are your weaknesses? My weakness, my, one of my weakness is um, the numbers and the figures. Now, I've learned to understand that a lot more, which I do now, and I actually sit and read the numbers and understand the numbers, but it's not my forte. It's not something I like to do every day. But whereas Andrew, he absolutely loved the numbers and the figures, and he will check things out and make sure it's done right. On the other hand, his weakness is that he takes an absolute age. Oh, God. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Lord, I can, I'm watching pain dry waiting for you to finish this. I'm thinking, come on, Andrew, while you're doing this, somebody else is making you getting rich. But then. Yes. Yes. But then. I learn a lot from Andrew in doing things properly and waiting and understanding the numbers and the figures because that's not a strong point of mine i could do it but it's not something i want to do i have learned over the years to do a lot more but it's not something i want to do mm. so what would you say my weaknesses and my strengths are weaknesses it's figures no way to go into weakness first you, i went to your strength first hmm? no, no you don't. your weakness is uh, the figures you're not very good on figures that sense. Well, I'm better now. Oh yeah, a lot better than you used to be. Mm. Um, directions again, you're a lot better now. But directions, seriously, don't ask me. You will get lost with a map. <laughs> <laughs> no sense of direction. I will get lost That's with well. a map. I get lost with the stuff now. I get lost with everything like that. I, I'm lost. Like you show me a map, I'm like, seriously, seriously. I don't even like, like worse. Sorry. When we do property, no, no, seriously, you gotta get this. I would look at the house. I want to see the inside, the rooms, the sizes. I want to see how it looks. I want to see for the tenants, not for me, but for the tenants. I'm looking at the potential for the tenants. And I'm, I'm checking um, the, the, the rental income and I'm checking the price and how much it is and all that. And Andrew, straight away, zoom, go into the map. And I'm like, why are you even watching that? I don't even, where's all these lines? The kitchen, the bathroom, what? I don't even, I don't even get it. Show me a picture. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to street view and he's going to look at where well, the location is in the right place all the rooms are the right size so you can rent it with no problems true <laughs> is it going to get the clientele there because it could be in an area you don't want to live in if you don't want to live there guarantee nobody else wants to live there either on that. I always remember in my early days I looked at a property one time and I said to and it, it was a it was a rough area where I was looking um, to the point where the police actually stopped me and asked if I was lost because my sort of car wasn't in that area normally. <laughs> and, in there. and when I did find the area, I saw the neighbours out on on this in his garden. So I just asked the neighbour what it's like to live there, and the conversation went basically. I'll cut the conversation by half because I can't say the other half of the words because there are four letter words and more. And it sort of basically says, if I had a chance to live somewhere else, I would do tomorrow <laughs> or now. <laughs> so, so it's, but no, it's, no it's, it's important. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so. But Camelita's strengths, one of her key strengths is goal setting and getting the goal set and L2 that pushes the boundaries. Mm pushes you to the limit, but it's still realistic. Because sometimes you get people set goals and they're so unrealistic, you quit before you even start doing them. Other times you got other people give set goals and it's so easy to get to, it's not really a goal to set. Mm. It's just ambling and got on there. Camelita is the best person I've known in my whole life who can set goals the way Camelita set goals. She is also extremely good at social media mm. and knows how to run those systems. She is extremely good at um, basically 
understanding people's true destiny, how to turn their business around mm -hmm. and make it happen. And again, with that, I don't know anybody who can do that like Camelita. And you're, and you're really good at getting people to understand the numbers in their business, if, mm -hmm. if it actually is in profit, if they're actually making money and, and how, it, how, it, how it's going to work in terms of the profitability. Whereas I am more to the practicality. You know, how, how is this going to pan out? Who are the people you should get? In? Who are you? Who should be your clients? Who should be your, connect, your connections? Where should your ideal clients come from? What percentage of, you know, of your business should be on this platform or that platform? That's sort of my area, whereas you focus more on the money. So let's yeah. come back on... It's so important if you want to win in business, as I said, as, as Henry Ford says, hire your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Now, I, am, I hate doing admin. Oh, Lord. I could do it, but I hate doing admin and I hate doing, you know, menial things and I hate doing... Uh, there are things which I just know. I don't like washing, cleaning, ironing, none of that. Okay. None of those things. Housework is not my forte. So I have people that does all of that because my strength is to focus on helping entrepreneurs monetize who they are and build their business. And there are people who does that extremely well and I love them for it. But also what you've got to remember as well, you get to a point in your business and you've got to start thinking, you're doing the housework, mm. which is what, about 12 pounds an hour or say about $20 an hour, whatever the going rate is. Mm. Is your time valuable doing yeah. that? Yeah. Or is it going to be cheaper for you to hire someone to do that so you can do and make the more expensive income? And and especially when you're a new startup. A lot, of, a lot of new startup companies think, well, I don't have the money to pay someone, so I might as well do it for myself because I'm actually saving money. No, you're not. It's like in the past, when we started off, we were doing a lot of everything. Today, We've got people doing most of everything mm -hmm. because you have to remember if you're charging, if you're paying them $20 an hour, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, whatever it is, euros, wherever you are in the world, yeah. whatever you're charging the hour, you could be making a thousand dollars a pound or euros in that hour. Mm -hmm. So you've got to always calculate wh where your strengths lie. Now, I love to cook. For those of you who've tasted my cooking, I love to cook. I can cook. I love to cook. I can eggs are interesting. That's another story. So let me tell you about the scrambled. How many of you want to hear the scrambled egg story? You have to tell me if you want to hear the scrambled egg story. Somebody tell me if you want to hear the scrambled egg story. We've got a scrambled egg story. Some of you like you want to hear the scrambled egg story. <laughs> who, who wants to hear my scrambled egg story? You're probably gonna never look at scrambled eggs like that again. Okay. Now. Because I am an entrepreneur, let us say, please. <laughs> Most of you haven't heard this, so I must tell yeah. you this. So, because I... This is a Caribbean style. No, family. it's not. How to do scrambled eggs. No, 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 it's not. Because my focus is on working, okay? My focus is on building and creating and helping my clients and property and investing and event the champions and all the things that we do every day that I love, okay? I love what I do. It's get, it gets tiring, but I love what I do. So I, I, I thought, okay, let me try and get something to eat during the day quickly because I want to eat healthier. So I prefer to cook or boil eggs or something else with salad or whatever during the day. It's quick, it's easy, it's quick, and it's healthy. Right, so I'm upstairs in the office, downstairs in the office, upstairs in the office, upstairs. Where, upstairs in the office, working. And I put two eggs to boil and Andrew went out to do something and I carried on working on my computer, listening to music, working. And then all of a sudden I hear, boom! I was like, what is that noise? Oh, it's probably the washing machine. Let me just, let me not, not about that. So I carried on working, carried on working, and I hear, boom! And when I ran, then I realized, the eggs, the eggs! When I ran downstairs, there was eggs everywhere. On the ceiling, on the floor, on the cupboards, there's, everywhere, there was literally idea. eggs everywhere. You got a kitchen the size of that kitchen where we lived at that point in time was <laughs> twenty foot one foot long by twelve foot wide. There was eggs on all four walls <laughs> across the whole of the ceiling. That's if you had an experience. <laughs> now the great thing is, Camilla, what did Camilla need to do? Was she busy clearing? Oh, of no, course, no, 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 no. of no, course not. No, 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 I I come back into my house. No, 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 no,
so when this happened now, I'm like, oh, oh can't be bothered with this. I need to go back upstairs and work. And so I just left it all there. <laughs> so when I came back in the house, I thought, it smells good for the house. It doesn't be much of it. So I thought, okay. I walked into the kitchen, and as I walked in the kitchen, my foot went crunch. I thought, what on earth? So I looked down, and I noticed bits of shells. Then I looked up, <laughs> and I realised eggs was everywhere. Did Camelita clean it up? No, she didn't. No. It did, it did get cleaned up, but when we moved three years later, <laughs> as we moved everything out, there was, I suddenly looked up, and there was still egg on the ceiling three years later that we missed. <laughs> Priceless. So I have learned, okay? My cleaner comes, my window guy comes, the other person comes, this one comes, they do their thing. My job is to build my business, okay? Everybody else can carry on doing your thing. They can do it around me, and I'm okay. I know what my strengths are. So instead of doing that, I would have salads during the day that I can manage, or I'd put something in oh, with nice. a timer on my phone so I know, oh, the lasagna is done, because I want to eat healthier during the day, or I just have a salad. So I know my strengths. I, mean, I don't know if other uh, people in other countries, but in England we have we have electric gadgets <laughs> in the house, and I misunderstood what it was for because I thought it was for a certain purpose, but I didn't realise it's actually a timer. <laughs> and when it goes off, you know, lunch is ready. I always thought it was a smoke alarm. But there we go. So I have learned. Okay, I have learned the hard way. <laughs> Focus on your strengths. If you if just focus on your strengths, forget yeah. your weaknesses. Yes. Let someone else deal with that if that's what they want to do. I remember one time. Um, the, the I, I, no, wait, 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 hold on. I was selling Sammy. Wait, 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 hold on. I was selling Sammy. So Sammy was like, "What's going on in the back?" Because I have my phone. I'm talking to my assistant. I ran downstairs to get some ice because I want some you know, a cold drink. And then I ran back upstairs in the office, and I pressed the thing to get the ice. On the ice cubes coming out. And all it was going click, click. I'm like, oh, can't be whatever it is. I press it a little bit, and then some ice came out of the glass. I thought, oh, okay, but then the thing stuck. So I'm like, oh, where is all that ice? <laughs> and then they come upstairs, and all I heard was, Brrr! it was just ice everywhere in the kitchen. I said, oh, when Andrew comes, he will clear it up. <laughs> Again, I know my strengths. Cleaning up is not. <laughs> So, I will leave that for Andrew to do. But guys, I'm talking about this across your entire business. Mm. Whereas with the goals and the targets and what we need to achieve and when we need to do yes. stuff, I am very structured on all of that. I'm structured on the calendar. I'm structured on when things need to get done. I'm structured on where money is going to go and how it's going to happen. And I'm very clear on that. Whereas with Andrew, he will make sure all the deliverables are done and that things are sorted out and all the tenants have and the contracts and the this and the that. So we all... We're very comfortable with our strengths. Where we have a problem is when you try to be me and I try to be you. Yes, I was going to say, is understand your team's strengths and weaknesses. Don't expect them to be brilliant and their mm. weaknesses, they won't be. Use their strengths, use your strengths and work as a team. And that's the key part. Yeah. And some of my team, they hate to do what I do. They're like, I don't know how you do what you do, but I don't like to do what they do. I do my staff. I don't like to do what they do. So, so social good. media, you don't see, me. I'm on social media. It's a blue moon, a cow's <laughs> jumping over it. It's not my forte. That is not my forte. No. I'll have the hands up to it. <laughs> Camalita is absolutely brilliant on the social media. I understand how it works, but it's just not my forte. Yeah. That's not my strength. I mean, and, and, and look, the ultimate, and this is where we're coming to as we come into close. Guys, if you are benefiting from this, click the link on the screen and join us this coming Saturday. We're doing a private webinar on how to turn your yearly income into your monthly income. A lot of these things we're talking about is about you managing your time, managing expectations, understanding your value, being able to monetize who you are. Those are the things we're going to talk about this coming Saturday. The links are on the screen. Click the link and join us this coming Saturday for the private webinar and also click the link and um, just subscribe to youtube we're going to be doing a lot more videos live on youtube uh, on this and a whole lot more topics uh andrew before we close off we're going to do a couple more and then we're going to close off so we understand our strengths and our weaknesses and we know what we've got to do i hate to do what you do and i know you hate to do what i do mm -hmm. but we sacrifice together mm -hmm. 
because patience is, Warren Buffett always says this, in business, patience is a virtue. The majority of people come into business, they're not willing to make sacrifices, money and time, which is usually the, more, the, the greatest, and they're not willing to have patience until it happens, especially if you've been flogging a dead horse for five years, 10 years, and you're thinking, oh my God, this is not happening, it's not working, and you think, oh, I'm just at the point where I've just had enough and I want to quit. Guys, I'm telling you, you have got to make huge, some of you have heard some of our stories, not having money to buy food, having a 10 pound overdraft, having to go and buy takeaway, you know, having to go and buy food that they were throwing away, having to drive a car with it breaking down every two seconds, you know, having to, um, to not buy clothes for years, didn't have a dentist for three years, not being able to um, do anything substantial, didn't go on holiday for 10 years. All of those things, guys, it is because we were making huge sacrifices. We kept every single rental property in the last economic downturn when everybody else, all of our friends lost a lot. We kept all because we made huge sacrifices. We paid the mortgages. We paid the bills. We paid the debts. We just kept going, making huge sacrifices. And um, yeah. Actually, one thing I was going to say there, if you are in a position where cash flow isn't where you want to mm. be, at the moment, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are not because of their, their fault, but because of COVID and things that happened, mm. your business is struggling at this point in time. For goodness sake, talk to your people who you are money to. Mm. Talk to the mortgage company, talk to the car finance, talk to the business loans. If that's the only thing you can do, it, talk to them and tell them your plans and what you intend to do. Yeah. We had to do that for a few years. Yeah. Where we're having to talk to them, say, it's going to happen. When we lost the few tens of thousands a few years back now, mm -hmm. We had to talk to a lot of people because yeah. they were expecting that money to pay mm -hmm. them and it didn't. And we literally had to start talking and negotiating with them and we did it. And it could have got, if we didn't talk, we would have lost things. Yeah. But because we talked and we negotiated and we told them exactly where we are and what we were doing, they worked with us and we were able to come through. And that's the important thing. Communication is key in what you do. Very, very it's, important. It's important. And so you've got to sacrifice and you've got to be patient and we've sacrificed a lot of money paying for courses and training and traveling and doing all sorts but you have to be patient when it's time to reap because we all know of the law of sowing and reaping you've got to work and then it will come but you all you've got to work Mm -hmm. And you've got to do income generating work and you've got to be focused on getting it done. You've got no choice. The reaping will come. We used to sit our, on our bed and think, when is it going to happen? <laughs> yes. When is it going to happen? How, how many of you feel that about yourself, about your life? When is it going to happen? You know, you've been plotting on for so long. And this, this can happen at any stage where you are financially as well. You can be earning good money and you can still be because you've got, you've got your goals, you've got your thing in place, you know what you should be doing, and you can be sitting there, when is it going to happen? Yeah, how many, how many of you feel like that right now? You know you should, be, you should be bigger, better, faster, doing things more efficiently, or you should have more, or you should have created more. How many of you feel like that right now and you think, why isn't it happening for me? Why hasn't it happened yet? You know, and you've been plodding on for five or 10 years. It took us, let me tell you guys, it took us, even though we had property and we were investing and doing all sorts, it took us 10 years of complete focused work, complete focused work. And I shared this with my inner circle last week, a week before last, when we had a work last call. And I showed them the targets and goals that we were working on, not sort of everything, but I showed them sort of, you know, what I could share. And they were blown away because they couldn't believe. And I showed them it over time because everybody wants things now. They want things to happen today. They, they sow and they expect to reap tomorrow. It doesn't work like that in the real world. You're living on a different planet if you think it's going to work like that. It is constant doing, 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 and having your asset and liabilities column in line, which I talked to my inner circle about. I'm not going to share this with you guys. You're going to be in the inner circle to hear it. Um, but I shared the, the assets and the liabilities and what... I did over 15 years to do what we're doing now. It's patience, but it is making sure that you're doing the right things constantly. If you don't know what to do, hire a coach to help you. That's what we do. We teach entrepreneurs how to do what we do or what we've done in order to get to their desired 
goal. Now, at the time when you're doing it, you're thinking this is not working. I don't know. I'm not sure this is going to happen. I'm not sure this is ever going to happen. We felt like that. Oh, yeah. We felt, we thought, yeah. oh, doing this again. And you're doing it. And you're thinking, when is, it, when is the response going to come? When, when, when am I going to get a breakthrough? How many of you are at the point where you're thinking, when am I going to get a breakthrough? When is this breakthrough going to come? Is this ever going to come? I want to encourage you, as long as you're consistent, as long as you're persistent, as long as you, you hire a coach, sometimes you need to get out of your own way. As long as you are willing to do that, you will, it will happen. Yeah. I promise you, because it, it happened for us. Yeah. The things we're doing now is things that we dreamed about 10, 15 years ago. We dreamed about doing this. Mm. We're like, gosh, I wish we, we can do that. Or I wish we can do that. You are, things can change in your business and your life like that. Once you have the right information, you take the right action, you collaborate with the right people, you believe bigger and faster, as long as you, are, you keep going in the direction to where you know you should be, it will crack. The problem for most people is that they park, they stop. They look at what others are doing and they think, oh, I could never do that. Don't do, I, I'll tell them my inner circle this last week. Don't do them, do you. Focus on you, what you're doing, what you're controlling. Because it may look like a little now, but compound interest in life and business is priceless. Mm. Compound interest over time, priceless. Mm. Because this is how, as you build and you develop long term, that's where you earn. Mm. Natasha, yes, I will be covering all of this. You don't need to prepare for Saturday at all. Um, I know your business. We talked about it. Uh, and I will get Sammy to send you uh, well, a questionnaire as well. Just have a pen and paper. That's one thing I would say open mind and make sure you had a good night's sleep before <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know me um so yeah so no so you don't need to prepare saturday is going to be all about your business we will talk about your business before we get into the training because it's focused on you the links are on the screen click the link and register for that uh, private masterclass, if a uh, private webinar if you haven't done so already and subscribe to youtube so you can get more videos click the link guys you don't want to miss out this is the first free one we, we've done for the year and this is probably going to be the last. Mm -hmm. So you need to just get yourself onto that uh, webinar and get cracking. Okay, two more, we're done. So we talk about making sacrifices. Um, the one that I'm going to talk about is so crucially important is knowing the end goal. What are you fighting for? What is your end goal? So when we started, we knew our end goal was multiple incomes so that we don't have to get up out of bed to earn money. My mother would always say, you guys know, I always share my mother's story. You guys, like you know my mother, like, like I know my mother. I always, my mother always say, invest in property, invest in income as, in generating assets. She would always tell me that, uh, she would say, look at this one, they bought property and look, they're living off of the rent and they don't have to work anymore. That's what you need to do. And she's been saying that since I was a child. And so my goal was to always do that. What, is going to be the end goal for you. Warren Buffett says, the end goal is that you should make money while you are sleeping. If you want to win in business, your focus has to be on making money while you are sleeping. So what are some of the things you can do to make money while you're sleeping? Go to Camelita shop and get my ebook, the latest one, latest updated ebook, how to fast track your success and how to create multiple incomes from what you already know. Go and get those eBooks, especially that multiple streams one. If you understand how to generate revenue from uh, income generating assets, things that you do once, buy once, write once, create once, and just keep selling it over and over and over and over and over, that's where Warren Buffett says you're gonna constantly make money while you are sleeping. Mm -hmm. Trading time for money is not the way forward. Right now, look at what's happening right now. If, if nothing else has taught you a lesson about the economy, creating your own economy, winning in business regardless of the situation, it is this time. Who would have thought that at the beginning of 2020, a pandemic would have happened? 
global economic downturn would have happened. I mean, GDPs have gone, gone through the door for a lot, of com a lot of countries because of an unexpected situation. There are things, however, in business that is recession-proof, depression-proof, and is job loss-proof, and everything else that's negative-proof. Your job is to find what those things are. And that's what we teach. That's why we invest in multiple things, whether it's property or, or books or eBooks or online courses or online programs or, or, or memberships or plan. I mean, the list is endless. Mm -hmm. If you don't want a repeat of the last five years, or you clearly want a plan for the next five years, join us this coming Saturday. If you can't make it, send us a very quick message so that we can help you truly to put a plan together to never be in this situation again. I have seen so many people that have reached out to me scrambling because they've made bad decisions the last 20 years, the last 10 years, the last five years, the last 18 months. And now this has happened and they're like, oh my God, what do I do? I've lost my job or my business has gone or you know, this has happened and they're sort of scrambling around. Now look, don't get me wrong. In any down economy, innovation happens and it's marvelous. People innovate, they create new things, they build new things, they build new platforms, it's priceless. So don't, that, that is one side, that's the beauty of a down economy. Innovation happens and it's, 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 it's amazing. But if you didn't, if you're not innovating right now, or you don't have a plan to not be where you are right now, you need to get a plan quick. Because every, ten, listen to this guys, every 10 years, this happened in 2010, we know of the economic downturn in 2010. This is 2020, yeah? 2030, where are you gonna be? What is your bank balance gonna look like? As Warren Buffett says, make money while you're sleeping. What are you doing now so that in 2030, you would have income while you are sleeping? What are you doing? If you wanna learn what to do, click the link on the screen, and join us this coming Saturday, 24th of October for this private masterclass, this webinar, how to turn your yearly income into your monthly income and how to create more types of income. Go to the shop, download the eBooks, how to create multiple incomes and how to fast track your success. So you would not be in this position come 2030. Because I know some people think, well, you know, sort of they're living out sort of hope in three years or five years time, things will, you know, things will get better and hope. Don't blame nobody for your success or failure. You are to blame. Not the government, not your family, not your spouse, not your boss. You are to blame for the present condition of your life. And only you alone can change it. So change it. It's up to you to make it happen. Mm. You don't wait for it to happen. You make it happen. Mm. And there's a, big, there's a big reason on that on Saturday, coming into October, the importance of Make mm. it happen, not waiting for it to happen, but you make it happen. You make your own mm. place in life and where you are. But it's like Kamali just talking about the reason why. Again, on Saturday, she'll be covering this and is getting clarity mm. to your reason why as well. Not just sort of say, oh, I want some houses, I want money. You need to have figures on there. Because, guys, let me tell you something. If your goals, this is the right time to plan for 2021. I don't care what has gone on. That's the past. Mm. Your past does not equal your future. Never. Okay? 2021. Right now, and I, I did this with my inner circle a couple of weeks ago. You need to plan right now for 2021. I have all my plans done since September 2021. Um, and every year I do that just as well. If you don't plan now, you need time to put that plan in place and then time to execute. You've got the next 90 days, the next three, less, less than 90 days, probably about two months, between now and the end of the year, two and a half, give or take. You need to start it and you need to get going now. So the reason why you want to find your big why, the reason why most people in business don't win in business is because, as Andrew said at the beginning, and we're going to close off with this, find your why and fly. Some of you have heard me do a video um, that's on YouTube or that's on my Facebook business page about finding your why and fly. I'm going to talk a lot more about that on, on YouTube. So click the link on the screen and subscribe. I'm going to talk a lot more about finding your why, how to find your why, what, how, to, how to identify what is your why. 
it may be something that you want to do, but your why may be something completely different. Find your why and fly. When you know exactly what you're meant to be doing in this world, that is what allows you to get up out of bed in the morning with fire in your bones. You can't wait to get up. You don't think, well, I'm not sure if I want to get up. I can't be bothered. I just, like, like during COVID, people were saying to me, oh, I, I'm going to binge watch. Like, what are you binge watching? I'm like, I don't even watch TV. What am I going to binge watch? Seriously? Um, and they were, they, were like spending, they were like spending a month, two months, three months, and they were just wasting time. If you know your why, why you're here, what makes you tick? It may be a charity. It may be helping someone else. It may be supporting um, you know, families. It may be helping entrepreneurs. That's my heart, my passion, to really help entrepreneurs to monetize who they are and to believe in who they are and to create their champion life. That's my passion. Like I can do that with my eyes closed. And in 2021, for all our inner circle, we're going to be teaching their kids and grandkids how entrepreneurship, how to build businesses, how to create, how to you know, invest, how to do all sorts in 2021. So if you want to know more about that one, uh, go to camelita.com and click on inner circle and just, just read out, just send us a quick message. Ask about the inner circle. It's all for inner circle members. Understand what your why is and help your children to understand what their why is. It may not be what you think it is, but when you find your why, you literally can fly. Everything becomes easier. Mm. Life, life doesn't become easy. Everything that you do becomes easier because you feel that there's, there's a reason for it. There's a passion behind it. There's something why. And it's easier to monetize because you know the value of it. You know the value of you in it, whatever that may be. So it then becomes your power. Easy. Your power of your Simple. why is so powerful. It's like the stories, I'm sure you've heard the stories, the, la the ladies out there, her child gets run over by a car, the car is on top of the child, and the lady goes down across. Now, mm. physically, she is not able to lift that car, but mm. guess what? She lifts that car off that child. How? Because the why was greater than the actual reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, if you've got your reason why big enough, the facts do not count. Yeah. And, you, and you've got to understand your why. When I found my why, why I'm doing what I'm doing, Oh, it just became so simple. It literally just flowed. Life just flowed. Money just was, my yearly income became my monthly income. And it was like, wow, why, wasn't, why didn't I know this before? Why wasn't I aware of this before? Because I was focusing on making money and I wasn't focused on my why. And now I know what that is money my yearly income became my monthly income business was simpler things was we were like if we knew we were going to do this all along we should start this all along but because the focus was on money and not, not on the why i want to encourage you guys as we close off we talked about the goal setting go to camelita.com get to my goal setting planner for champions camelita shop just go to camelita shop get the goal setting planner for champions this will help you to plan out your entire 2021 and it's free shipping anywhere in the world so do it now before the price goes up um and and, and let that help you because that's how i plan out my life and my time and my day and a lot of people say camelita how do you do so much it is because as, as i said before it's complete structure get up in the morning 30 minutes on the, on the treadmill have breakfast get into the office um and just get on with the work and a living is made from nine to five a fortune is made after five or I go for a walk during the day, or I just lie down and have a mental rest, or, you know, just, just every day, every hour of every day is structured. And that, that is what we talk about in the, the planner. Go to Camelita to shop and get a planner. Um, that's what we talk about in there, how to structure your life so you can get more done. But the ultimate is that you find your why, because when you do, you will fly. And, and if you think of a bird in flight, flying is not, he's not working hard to fly. He just lifts himself up and just flies. It's, not, it's effortless. If you look at an eagle flying, or flying above everything else, it's effortless. It's not flapping, 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 flapping like a, like a chicken or a bird or, or a duck or something. It's just up, glide, and go. Now, yes, he will have predators on the way and he will get distracted on the way 
and the rain will happen and this will happen and that will happen, but the flight itself is effortless because he's in his why. He knows that's, that's him, that's what he's meant to be doing. He's meant to soar. When you find your why, and you're able to fly, it, the flight becomes effortless. It's simple. It's not going to be easy all the time, but it's going to be simple. Guys, I really want to encourage all of you. I mean, today, as I said, this is the first one and probably the last we're going to do for the year um, on a free masterclass. We, we have paid masterclasses, as you guys know. It's on Camille to Shop. Go to Camille to Shop and book for our paid, paid masterclass. We've got one coming up on property. If you want to know more, we have one on turning your yearly income into monthly income, which is this weekend. Uh, and then we also have, that's the 20th of October, and then we have another one in January on uh, fast-tracking your success and creating multiple income. So we've got a lot going on, and there's a lot more after that. Take the chance to do it. The links are on the screen. Subscribe to YouTube. You'll get more. And um, book for this coming Saturday. We want, to, we want to help you to win. We want to help to win fast and win big. This is your opportunity for success. I hope that the information we shared with you here today constantly come the cost. Make sure it's, if, if you're profitable or not, invest in value and in your mind. Do your due diligence in investing. Um, put God first, family second, business third. Do the work and make it happen. Make sacrifices in business, whether it's together or on your own and be patient patience is a virtue we know that know what the end goal is know what you're fighting for know what you're going to do with the money when you get it as warren buffett says learn to make money while you're sleeping put things in perspective whether it's investment savings family whatever okay know your strengths hire your weaknesses priceless take calculated risks quit being risk adverse you're not going to get anywhere Persistence is absolute key. And we talked about that at the beginning. And anything is achievable and anything is possible if you just keep going and obviously understanding what you need to do and keep going. And last but not least, find your why and fly. Do these things if you truly want to win in business. And if you want to turn your yearly income into your monthly income, if you just want to know a lot more about this, click the link on the screen and sign up for our private webinar this coming Saturday. It's only for 20th of October. It's only for a small group of people. We are going to be diving into your own business. What are the things you can do to truly build your champion life and live your champion experience? If we can go from where we went, if I can go from the public dump in Trinidad to being featured in Forbes, both of us having you know a multi-million dollar property business and so much more, you can do anything but you've got to do the work. A living is made from nine to five. A fortune is made after five. You've got to get it done. This is your opportunity for success. Don't have a repeat of the last five years. Create your champion life the next five years. And do you want to give, leave any parting words? Make it happen, really. It's, mm. it's as I'm saying, it's finding your why and then working it. Once you found your why, how to do it will we'll, mm. we'll appear. Mm. And the thing is, if you're needing help, cool. Reach come out. Along on, come along on, on Saturday. Mm. Definitely come along Saturday. You will learn so mm. much from there because the thing is, been there, got the t shirt. So we're, have... not, we're not talking from the theories. We haven't read about it. We've done it. Mm. And um, it's quite funny because we did have somebody put out there, turn your monthly income into your yearly income, which we can teach you that as well. But <laughs> most people do want to learn how to turn their year, uh, yearly income into their monthly, monthly income. income. So that's what we'll be doing. And we, we can teach that because we have done that several times. And, you know, yeah. it's, no, it's not easy all the time. It does take work. I'm sorry to say this is not a case you're going to be able to sit down and watch TV <laughs> all day and... Uh, and it's like, oh, I'll pay the lottery and the money will come through the door. The good thing is when you've earned it yourself, guess what? If you lose it, you can earn it again. Absolutely. You know what to do. Absolutely. And that's the key difference. You understand the value of money. So you ready to win? Get to work. Yes. Get to work. Take action. Follow the links. Get to work. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure, Lena, yes. to share. It's always our pleasure. I think I really wanted to do this because I know so many people 
and are struggling right now with everything. And we, we wanted to do this to just encourage people that, you know, if you, if it's not happening or it's not happening fast enough, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. You will win. It's okay. So guys have an amazing evening. Have an amazing night. Have an amazing day, wherever you are in the world. Get to work. Click the links on the screen. Don't forget. We will see you soon. And as always, you know, we will see you at the top. At the top. Get to work. God bless. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Have a great Bye. evening. <laughs> Bye, Natasha. Bye, Jennifer. Bye. Bye, Denise. Bye, Denise. Bye, Denise. Bye, Linda. Bye, Linda.